Okay, so the Red Wings have wrapped up in Sweden, earning one out of a possible four points in the process, an overtime loss against the Ottawa Senators, and a regulation meltdown against the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Red Wings, at this point in the season, have gone on a bit of a slump, and I don't think that's all too controversial to say. The Wings are 3-5-2 in their last 10 after starting out the season super hot. They had the five-game win streak, you had Larkin and the Brinkett at the top of the NHL in points and goals. Everything was looking good, but as of late, the Red Wings have been disappointing. And now, you have yourselves a Jake Wallman injury that may or may not result in a Simon Edvinson call-up, and things are going to change drastically, and Jeff Petrie and Ben Sherratt are going to be given a lot more minutes, and this team is inconsistent, and they can't score in the power play, and they can't kill their penalties, and yada yada yada. There's a lot that's going on with the Wings over the past few games that you can complain about. But, wrapping everything up from Sweden yesterday, what I wanted to do was go over the comments made by Lucas Raymond in regards to the team's performance as a whole. Now, I'm going to leave a link in the description to this article on Detroit Hockey Now, talking about how Lucas Raymond and the Red Wings are leaving Sweden with disappointing results. Kevin Allen is the scribe, and the article is from yesterday. Let's go over what Lucas Raymond had to say in regards to scoring a goal in each of the two Sweden games, but not end up winning any of them. It's obviously a special experience being in my home country in front of my family, but at the end of the day, we came here to win two games and we won none of them. I'm not in the best mood right now. The article then goes over what exactly happened in these two games, what ruined Raymond's mood and the wing spirit was blowing a 2-0 third period lead, and then also losing to the Ottawa Senators. The Wings' power play troubles and their trend of taking penalties at critical times continued as the Maple Leafs scored three unanswered goals in the third, adding to the misery of the Toronto experience. Tyler Bertuzzi, the guy whom the Red Wings traded away at last year's deadline, had a goal and an assist in the Toronto comeback. This is what Raymond says about this situation. If you look at the first two periods, we were playing with speed, and we were getting pucks deep. We're rimming the puck, we're having possession. We're hard in our D zone, and then in the third, we kind of just got scared to protect the lead. We just need to be able to close these games out. And close these games out indeed. We had talked about this in the yesterday post-game video, but the Wings had control, and they had a pretty good chance to win after 40 minutes. They were looking confident, they were making plays, they were stabilizing their defense, but in the third period, things just kind of fell apart. They lost their composure, they started taking penalties, the Leafs started to get more zone time, and the Wings just could not clear the puck. Things were not good, and they couldn't win face-offs either. That really contributed to more of that possession time. Raymond has a point in that the Red Wings were kind of their own worst enemy here. Sure, you have to give props to the Toronto Maple Leafs for having the drive and the willpower to succeed, even though you're down 2 nothing at the start of the third period. Things were good for Toronto. I mean, a big comeback win is always going to be celebrated. But to be on the receiving end of that certainly does not feel good, and Raymond is pretty much directly saying, yeah, like, it's nice being here in front of my family in my home country, but I'm not in the best mood right now. We lost all these games, and... I mean, he didn't say this, but you have to imagine that having Tyler Bertuzzi as the guy to score a goal and add an assist in the process, that makes things feel a little bit worse. Now, Bertuzzi had the opening goal, the cross crease, where he was crashing right in front to bang in the puck, and then there was the Tavares goal, that in which Bertuzzi set up the game winner. So, there's Big Bert's nephew going out there and setting things up for the Maple Leafs to win and the Detroit Red Wings to lose. We also did have a few extra comments made by Derek Lalonde in regards to the Wings and their play in Sweden. This article goes out there and continues talking about the power play. It talks about the loss of Jake Wallman to an injury and how this had indeed hurt the team in the third period. The five defensemen problem created an issue for us, Lalonde said. Obviously, they were playing their top guys down to stretch. That created some matchup problems. We took the late penalty. Obviously, our best defenseman, Sider, was in the box. They get one there. Unfortunate ending. However, this article, even though it goes over all the downs in the past few days here, it does talk about some good. It talks about Lalonde's comments made on Alex Lyon. As we had talked about in the yesterday video, Lyon played phenomenally well. He was a stud, keeping the wings in it for the first 40 minutes, and even the goals that he allowed. I mean, cross creases, one-timers in the slot, 
the other cross crease. Like, you can't really get upset about Lyon in the loss yesterday, considering the Wings only scored two goals and their offense completely shriveled up in the final 20 minutes. Alex was excellent, Derek Lalonde said. He was good, just looked confident too. I think that's a big part of his performance tonight, just looking confident and giving our guys confidence. Lyon went out there and talked about his performance yesterday, saying, I felt all right. It's been a long process since we got here. Obviously, Hugh so left, he had his baby a few days ago, so I've been trying to prepare as if I was going to play since. It's kind of nice to have that runway. I just assumed that I would be playing, so it was good. I felt pretty comfortable. Again, it's a learning experience, and I'll be better for next time. Oh, Alex, buddy, you don't have to go out there and say any of that. You were fine. You were totally okay. That is the end of the article. There's a little bit more that's written about in regards to the actual meat and potatoes of what happened in Sweden for Detroit. So again, the link is going to be in the description if you want to go ahead and read more about that. But ultimately wrapping this all up, I just got to go out there and say, I mean, look, Lucas Raymond has a point. This Wings team needs to go out there and start closing out their games. I have no idea what happened between the first few games of the season and the last few, wherein the confidence is shriveled up, the power play has completely gone dead. What's the percentage at? Like 2 for 47? They shooting at 4% or something like that? It's really bad on the power play so far, and their penalty kill is not really getting it done either, especially when the games matter the most. I mean, you could say, hey, it's up to the Wings to not take gosh darn penalties towards the end, and that's true. But at the end of the day, there is a talented team here that just happens to struggle with some very weird problems. We talked about this in the Ottawa video, but hey, it takes a lot to come back from being down 4 nothing, all within the span of like one period. So the fact that the Wings were able to do that and then completely crap the bed in overtime, just play a fumbled hot potato puck kind of game where they just could not get any sustained offense and the Sens were able to strike while the iron was hot at the very end of the game, Tim Stutzla with the baseball swing in OT, that does not feel good. So if you're a Red Wings fan, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think really happened with this team from the first half of the season played so far up until the last half? Because things have changed, the guys aren't scoring, the power play is dead, and I mean, look, there are so many things that you could dissect as to what was going well that contrast with what's going poorly nowadays that it kind of gets a bit overwhelming to try to label everything out but i want you to do your best to let me know in the comments what your thought is on the biggest issue is it straight up just mentality is it the coaching the coaching was fine earlier on in the season but now it's not lucas raymond's talking about how the team keeps on blowing leads and how it's not feeling all too great so what are your thoughts about that what do you think the red wings need to do heading back over to north america to fix down these problems to tighten the joints, tighten the bolts a little bit, and make sure that this does not happen again. You're not going to go flawless for the rest of the season, but at least show some hockey that is worthwhile watching. 60-minute efforts, not blowing the leads late, not taking late penalties, and when you do take penalties, having the ability to kill them off. One out of four possible points in the greatest showcase so far this season, and now... All that's left to do is a lot of reflection. I mean, the Wings are still in a playoff spot at the moment, so it's not the be-all and end-all. I mean, are they in a playoff spot? Yeah, okay, they're in the wild card. Okay, great. No longer top three in the Atlantic, but they do have that first wild card to their name. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Wings and their Sweden stint. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.